with each assignment, I should be able to promote each of you and have it run. All right, hello everybody and welcome to the Now What Business series. Uh, my name is Jenny Bellinger and I am your host today. I am going to be uh, introducing all of our experts and then uh, introducing our featured speaker today. And we will have time for questions and answer at the end. Uh, for all of our participants, you guys do have uh, down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that uh, if you are participating in the webinar live with us, you have a Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen where you can pull that up to ask any questions. Um, if that's not working for you the way you'd like it to, you can also use the chat function um, to send questions to the panelists. Um, Megan will be uh, presenting for about 15 to 20 minutes-ish during the course of this presentation, and then we'll have lots of time for Q&A afterwards. So I'm gonna get started with our introductions. Uh, first, I'm going to be introducing Marcel Brown. He is known as the most trusted name in technology and is a nationally recognized technology expert with over 25 years of professional experience. He's been featured on multiple national TV and radio appearances, quoted for numerous published articles, and his blogs have received national attention. His research on the uh, lost Steve Jobs speech and lost Steve Jobs mouse went viral on the internet and was subsequently spotlighted on numerous national media outlets. He's worked for large organizations such as Hearst Communications, Washington University School of Medicine, and Anheuser-Busch. Marcel has also made a name for himself running his own technology services and consulting company for the last 18 years. Focused primarily on the needs of small businesses and in-home clients, Marcel is intimately familiar with the technology needs of business owners and professional people, including personal com computing devices and services from Apple, Google, and Microsoft, as well as the technology required for mobile and work from home arrangements. Joanne May, who will be joining us shortly, is with the Illinois Metro East Small Business Development Center, and she is the director for that uh, center. She is a Glen Carbon resident and earned a bachelor's in business administration from SIUE in 2005, followed by an MBA in 2007. Joanne has a small business background in the restaurant industry. Her brother owns DiMaggio Pizza and Pasta in Highland after their parents retired. Joanne was a graduate student for the Small Business Development Center at SIUE from August 2005 to September 2007. She's also served as an international business consultant for the Small Business Development Center's International Trade Center. DiMaggio May's other, or Joanne's other work experience includes being an assistant manager at Walgreens in Edwardsville, a personal banker for U.S. Bank in Belleville, and a mortgage default counselor for U.S. Bank in St. Louis. Joanne came back to the Small Business Development Center as the Small Business Development Specialist and became the SBC. SBDC director in August of 2017. She currently sits on the City of Edwardsville Advisory Board, serves as the Secretary for the Latino Roundtable, and is a member of the Monroe County Economic Development Corporation. Our next expert is Carol Sparks. Carol Sparks is the daughter of small business owners, and she grew up with the understanding that business owners desire protection for their families, for their employees, and for the future success of their business. In 2009, Carol founded the Sparks Law Office PC with the purpose of advocating for the protection of small business owners. She has served her small business clients throughout each stage of their business life life cycle, formation, strategic growth, and final disposition. Carol has experience in serving small business clients during times of economic growth as well as economic downturn. She has had the privilege of supporting businesses during their success and challenges. Because of her personal and professional experience, Carol is able to help the small business owners who are impacted by this economic uh, or by this pandemic known as COVID-19 and the uncertain economic circumstances that have resulted from this crisis. Focusing on what business owners truly desire, protection. Attorney Carol Sparks will address what tools are necessary for small business owners to protect their workplace, their workforce, and their work product. Our next expert is Kurt Rickoff. Kirk, has, sorry, Kurt Rickoff. Kurt has been a small business advisor for over 20 years. He joined Rickoff and Associates full-time in 1997, but has been involved with some aspect of the family business since its inception. 
Kurt's parents started the business in the basement of their home in 1974. This allowed Kurt to be immersed with the challenges of a small business startup and see and enjoy the rewards of success at all levels. Currently, he is the CEO and owner of the firm along with his wife, Mindy. They also own and operate Payroll Central. Both companies serve small businesses throughout the entire St. Louis metro area. Kurt's passion for technology has kept his firm at the forefront of delivering superior client services. His past experience in the banking and securities allow him to advise clients on all aspects of their business operations. Kurt serves as the director of a local community bank. He attained his enrolled agent or EA certificate from the Internal Revenue Service in 1998. He is an active member of the Professional Association of Small Business Accountants, serving on the board and as the president in 2018 and 2019. In his personal life, Kurt is per currently president of the Albers Elementary School Board and director for the uh, Clint Clare uh, Fire District. His favorite pastime is spending uh, time traveling with his wife, Mindy, and their children, Allison and Carson. He is, an, he is also an avid St. Louis Cardinals baseball fan. Oh, I feel you on that one, Kurt. <laughs> uh, our final expert in the series is actually myself. I'm Jenny Bellinger, certified professional coach. I started my first business in 2010. During that time, I helped many other people start businesses as well and made a name for myself as a sales and leadership coach in the world of network marketing. In early 2017, I completed my certification as a professional coach with the Center for Coaching Certification and Level Up Coaching LLC was launched March 1st of 2017. In this time, I've coached and trained many sales uh, professionals in over 35 direct sales companies, including doTERRA, Essential Oils, Rodan and Fields, Juice Plus, Paparazzi Jewelry, Isogenics, Young Living, Touchstone Crystal by Swarovski, and many more. I've also been hired to coach sales managers in lawn and landscape companies, painting companies, marketing, and financial advising companies. I am also the executive producer and host of the Badass Direct Sales Mastery podcast series available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and many other podcast apps. And finally, our presenter for today is Megan Martin. Before I give her introduction, I do want to give a short disclaimer that uh, all of the information we're providing is true and accurate as of today's date, which is April 22nd, 2020. So if you're watching this on replay, things may have changed between now and when you're watching this. So Megan Martin is the owner of Conquer Consulting. As a certified executive career coach and business consultant, she specializes in working with professionals who are looking to make a transition in their career or grow within their leadership position, as well as business owners who want to build, rebuild, or scale their businesses. With a background in organizational pharmacy leadership and national level sales, Megan brings wide experience not only in leadership coaching and team building, but also professional branding and business marketing. Clients share that Megan is honest, upfront, and can see potential in others even when they can't see it themselves. Her positive energy is contagious and her encouraging communication has clients ready to step up and take action. So I'm now going to turn over the microphone and presenting to Megan so she can start her presentation. Thanks, Jenny. Hello, everybody. I'm going to share my screen here. And Jenny, if you can just give me a thumbs up so that you can see it once I do, then I will go ahead and jump in and get started. All right. So what I wanted to um, come to you today as the first speaker within our series is to really talk about the mindset of getting back to business during this difficult time. So just uh, to kind of expand a little bit first, in terms of the introduction, um, who am I? So my name is Megan Martin. I am the owner of Conquer Consulting. I am a wife and mother of two school-aged kiddos who are all working from home right now. So if there are any loud disruptions, I apologize up front, but um, we're all trying to make it work, right? Uh, as Jenny shared, I am a pharmacist by schooling, uh, previously had a corporate pharmacy career as a leader, also have experience in national sales, and um, really truly a love for mentorship that led me to the coaching that I do today in terms of working with executives who are rising up in the leadership ranks and working to most effectively 
lead their teams, most definitely finding a shift in how to do that at this time virtually. And um, then also with business owners. So in having worked within um, sales and figuring out how to grow and develop um, a successful brand, really helping business owners to do that as well. So where are we at? I wanna first just give um, kind of a reflection of our current state today as a nation, right? COVID hit a few weeks ago now, stay at home order was put into place and our brick and mortar businesses unfortunately had to close doors. Unless they were an essential business, we had to uh, turn and lock the key. So what did that mean for many of us? That it was time to go virtual. And what does that look like for your business? And how do you do that as quickly and most successfully as possible? And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how do you make that mindset shift to be able to step into, which for many is a really uncomfortable zone or environment of the virtual world. So the first thing that I want to do is talk to you about how to evaluate your current personal current status. Where are you at in terms of your emotions um, regarding this change? And the reason that this is important is although it sounds great to focus on the positive, be grateful, get into action, unless that is where your mindset is at currently, it's really difficult to do. So the first thing that we need to do is reflect on what our current emotional state is, why we feel like that's where we are at, and then decide where we want to be um, currently. So where do we wanna be come May? And then where do you wanna be a year from now? And really figuring out in this spiral, this emotional spiral, where you fall. I've got an exercise um, that I can share with anyone who would like it. Um, I'll show it to you here in just a second. But if you want a copy of it, you can feel free to email me at megan at conquerconsulting.com and I'd be happy to send it over. But what it is, is a, a life lens check, is what I call it. And what we're doing is within each of these various categories, reflecting on where am I currently? What is my current emotional state? and quite literally circling in the spiral where you fall. Once you've made that determination as to where you are, if any of those for the following categories, so your business or your career, your financial status, your social relationships, so friendships and, and those relationships um, with your, your peers, personal relationships, so those maybe with your spouse or within your home, with your family, um, your immediate family, your health, your contributions, and then your personal development. So for each of those categories, ranking where you would say you are today in this emotional space. Then from there, figuring out why, what would you say would be the reason why that's where you are and, and, and why you're feeling that way? And then where do you wanna go? And when you decide where you want to go, especially for May, I want you to be realistic. So while, right, we would all love to say, oh my gosh, I'm in a place of feeling completely powerless right now. I wanna be in a place of absolute joy. That's too far of a stretch. It's hard to just switch and be there. Instead, we wanna move up these emotions one or just a few at a time. Climbing the ladder slowly, so that we can digest that change. We can really kind of squash that fear that's holding us back from moving up that emotional change to getting there slowly. So the document that I'm referencing, I've got that up right here. It's the Life Lens Deep Dive. And again, it just walks you through for each of those different categories, a place for you to record and reflect on how you are feeling for each of those um, different subject matters or, or categories. On page four, you'll see there's a copy of the um, spirals that then you can reference for each of those and then share um, and, and reflect on really where you are at in the process. So I wanna encourage you to do that. Again, if you'd like a copy of it, you can feel free to email me and I will get that to you. Um, and 
if you want to talk about it, we absolutely can always schedule some time to, to bring you that. So from there, now what? You know you wanna move forward, you know you want to work your business, but you're not sure how. This time is um, difficult, it, it's confusing. There may be a lot of fear around what to do next. If you're someone who has not traditionally worked virtually or done webinars, um, it may be a really scary time. So the way that I see it, you really have three options in a time like this. You can either continue to work your business, so continue to service your customers. You can work on your business. So if there are those things that you have said, oh, oh when I have time, I'm gonna get my accounting straight. Oh, when I have time, I'm gonna reorganize my office. When I have time, I really need to start working on building my brand online. Those are things that you can do to work on your business. Or you can work on yourself. So is there another certification that you can get on board? Are there continuing education units that you can work on um, for your profession? Um, are there different things that you can do to work on your personal development during this time. That being said, the one that I wanna focus on primarily today is continuing to work your business. Because unless all else fails and all ideas are exhausted, that's really where I would love for you to stay so that you can continue to generate income. So what does that look like? Well, the way that I see this piece is really we have um, three options here as well. You can continue to offer your same services if those services you previously offered in your brick and mortar business are something you can do remotely. We have the ability to modify our services. Maybe it is the same service that, that we were offering, but if we tweak it just a little bit, we would have the ability to do that. Or we can come to the table, brainstorm, and come up with new services. And uh, the quote that I shared here is something that I really believe strongly about and have been reminding my business owners, opportunities don't just happen, you create them. So what can we do to create new opportunities at this time? That quite frankly, could end up being services that you add to your book of business um, as you move forward after the doors reopen. So how do we decide which? How do we know which is the right one to do? Yes, obviously, if you could just continue to do your job the same way you've always done your job, that's probably the easiest. But if you are faced with that question of how do I continue to do my business, then which way do I go? And what I recommend is actually not basing that off of what you feel your capabilities are or what you feel your services are, um, their potential is, but take yourself out of the equation and think about your customers, your consumers, your clients, and what are their needs during this time, and how can you position yourself to better serve them? What I mean by this is to consider your clients human needs. So we've got these listed here. Um, there are six basic human needs that we all have. First one is certainty. So that sense of security, reassurance, um, comfort, you know, that we really feel safe and comfortable in the world. The next one is uncertainty or variety. And right, if you think about this as a scale, that would obviously play opposite of the certainty factor, but really giving you a sense of change and interest and adventure. The next one is significance. That is being different, being unique, um, being seen as a special individual. That goes actually opposite scale-wise of love and connection. So belonging, being part of a community, um, a feeling of acceptance and support. The next two actually go together. So growth and contribution, unlike the other four that compete with each other and we wanna keep them in balance, Growth and contribution actually rise together. So growth being the desire to learn and grow and evolve, and then contribution being the desire to give and contribute to those in your community and those around you. And if you think about this from a brand perspective, so this is something that I work on with all of my startup brand new business kind of clients is as we start to build their brand in the marketplace, 
how many of these needs can we check off the box? The more of these needs that you can simultaneously or within various services or interactions touch, the stickier the relationship's gonna be. The more likely they are going to be a raving fan returning customer and really come to you as a resource. So what does that look like? What does it look like to try to, to hit all of these? Um, I actually, in reflecting on this, shared some examples from some of my, my business owners with myself, and actually a couple of them are on today, so that's exciting. Um, but one example that I have is um, my cleaning lady. She has a cleaning service and um, can't, right, can't get in home right now because she can't be in her client's living space. But right now, a lot of people are cleaning things out, right? They're spring cleaning, they're, they're doing the COVID clean and uh, reorganizing and may have items that they want to donate, which can't be accepted right now. So what she and her company are doing is taking those items for you, picking up the bags out on your porch, disinfecting them, storing them until those facilities reopen and doing those donations for you. So what happened here, right? What buckets? Did Cheryl and her business reach? They checked off the certainty box, right? So someone who is organizing, maybe labeling, re, re, um, you know, setting up their, their living space, they're looking for certainty. They want something that they can control. And by helping them do that, by helping them do that effectively, Cheryl is checking off their certainty box. What's the other piece? contribution, right? So she's telling them not only clean your space out, but don't throw it away. I hope that you are contributing to those in need by donating some of your gently used items. So she is doing both of those pieces. And really, if you think about it, even the love and connection, she's checking off the box because she's making that contact with her current customers, even though she can't get in their home um, to do her normal services. Another example I have is um, a new business, j and Trailers, who started uh, literally the week that the shutdown happened. Brand new business. How much scarier can that be, right, to have to open in the middle of a pandemic? Um, but they sell trailers, right? That seems like how in the world could you sell trailers not in house? Well, they stretched themselves and started doing video um, explanations of the trailers. So educational trailer talks. They have a YouTube channel, they're promoting it on social media, they are building their brand while they are in this pandemic. So what are they doing? Where are they checking the box, right? So we've got connection, most certainly. They're connecting to their audience, they are growing their brand um, certainty, in a sense, in terms of that credibility. But then they're also contributing to people's growth. I know I do not know anything about trailers. So when I watch it, I'm increasing my knowledge base around something new. Um, so that they're checking off the box as well. Um, for me, what does it look like? It's having conversations. So one, I'm trying to check off the box of certainty, helping people to feel safe and stable and know they can come up with a solution, but also stretching them to kind of get in that uncertain, uncomfortable area of growth. So we are actually talking together to balance their certainty and uncertainty while looking to promote that growth factor as well. In that, I'm looking to check off that connection box. I want my clients to know I'm here, I'm there for them, I want to know how things are going for them, I'm looking to create that emotional um, relationship stickiness so that they know when they come out of this, I'm still gonna be right there in their court, helping them to get through it and then be successful on the other end of it. So um, it may be, it may be something you have known about, it may be a totally new concept to you, but I promise you the more of these different areas for your clients that you can meet, the more loyal customer base you will have. Um, and if you can think of, how do I need to tweak my services right now to meet these needs? If you can think of how you can meet their needs, you will be able to find new services to offer. 
All right, the last thing I have is just, do you need help? So if you have no idea where to start, you might know you need to pivot, but you feel stuck. You're in that lower half of the emotional spiral, or maybe you had a great idea, but you just have no idea how to actually put it into action, into fruition then I invite you to join me for a free mini brainstorming session. Um, if you visit conquerconsulting.com, you can schedule a call and uh, we can have a chat and get you back to business. Jenny, I'll turn it back over to you. Awesome. Well, Megan, that was a great presentation. Thank you for helping us work through the mindset of this, uh, of this trying time. Uh, at this point, there are no specific questions coming in from our attendees, but guys, it, 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 we now are open for the next 20 minutes for Q&A, and you can ask a question of Megan or any of our other experts about uh, whether it's uh, business legal, any of the other, uh, we have a tech expert, we have a CPA financial expert, and then also someone from the small, uh, Joanne is here from the Small Business Development Center as well. So any questions are open and available at this time. Thank you, Megan. Fabulous presentation. So I'm sure people are typing right now, or you guys are welcome to, um, if you want, if you feel like you've got a question that's a little too hard to um, post, I can also promote you to be able to allow you to turn on your microphone and talk. So we've got a couple of people who are saying great job. Uh, let's see, Joe says, what are your thoughts on prospecting during this time? Uh, want, he wants to be sensitive to what's going on. Yeah, so I think that's a great question, right, Joe? What service that you offer can meet your client's needs? So not focusing on it necessarily being a sale, but how you can actually offer them a solution. So what problem can you solve for them? And um, I think in approaching it that way, it takes the you know, uncomfortable ick ickiness of prospecting out of it, but rather that you have something to help them during this time is really what I would focus on. Great. All right. I hope that uh, answered your question, Joe. Uh, or if you guys want more information on that, you can feel free to uh, message us and let us know. And I, like I said, I have the avail availability to allow people to, uh, you guys can also raise your hands. There's a raise your hand function that you can do as well. Giving people time to type. Let's see. Uh, uh, Devin says, Megan, concerning your spiral model uh, on where your mindset is, what is the first step to moving up that spiral into a more healthy mindset. Yeah, so it's really that brainstorming. Um, as you kind of reflect on it and you circle where you are, when you think about what's causing you, so the why, so why you feel that way, is figuring out typically it's driven by a cue. So there's a cause and effect that if this is going on, then I feel like this. And it's really just deciding with yourself what would be a healthier response for the then part of that statement. So that I know if I start to feel overwhelmed, you know, instead of just shutting down and I, you know, oh, I don't know, want to bed on the couch and watch something on Netflix, I'm not going to do that. I know I want to move forward past that kind of paralyzation of, of hopelessness. And I want to move towards something healthier. That might not look like I'm going to start prospecting. I'm going to start delivering this new service. It just might look like for someone, I'm going to go and sit at my desk and reorganize my drawers. Something that can offer you a little bit more of that control if you're feeling that you're in that helpless space. Now, if you've been organizing for the last four weeks and like everything is tip top shape, then I do want you to move forward and start brainstorming. Put pen to paper. Dream. Dream again, right? Every small business owner is a big dreamer because they had to take that risk originally. So put pen to paper and start dreaming and then decide how you're going to move forward from there. I think that's great. Um, one of the things I wanted to um, point out that you said during that conversation uh, about the spiral that people may or may not have picked up on is also keeping in mind that you're not going to jump from the very bottom of the downward spiral to the very top of the upward spiral. It, it is going to be a stair step up the ladder 
to move your way up through those emotions. So taking a look at that emotional spiral, which she did um, say that if you want to email her, uh, Megan at conquerconsulting.com. Um, I did put that in the chat. So that way you guys can go ahead and copy and paste and send her an email and she'll send you a copy of that uh, emotional upward spiral, downward spiral, spiral exercise that you can do uh, written. Uh, Anonymous <laughs> says, what's the best way to figure out what people are concerned about on a broad scale? Is it too simple to just post a question on, so on social media? No, ask, 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 ask questions. Absolutely. Um, if you are part of any forums of any kind, different groups in social media, it is such a good place to ask. It's been somewhere where if I even have a client that um, I'm trying to get out of that fear-based thinking and into action, I will ask and I will just share with the group, I've got a client that's thinking about X, Y, Z, would there be any interest? And um, yeah, most definitely a great place to do some of that customer discovery. Awesome. All right. We've got another question here in the chat. Uh, Anne says, many of our employees are feeling overwhelmed and uncertain as well. Uh, in the slides, you started with something that you would recommend doing with employees uh, uh, via Zoom or any other suggestions to help keep them engaged and motivated for when they can come back to work. Yeah, I think too, you know, when you think about it um, as an executive or um, an employer, right, one is to consider where they are in terms of their emotional spiral. You could absolutely, on a one-on-one, -on -one, do that exercise with them or, or distribute that to them, and you are by all means welcome to use that if you um, have me email it to you, but have them do it prior to, um, most ideally, and then review it with you in their one-on-one, -on -one. Um, but helping them to come up with solutions. Uh, one of the biggest things is just recognition that it's okay. You know, that the state that we are in definitely causes some of that fear and uncomfortability and um, overwhelm. For many, it's a really big balance in having their families home with them. Um, so just being transparent in terms of the understanding and acceptance of it and the other thing I would tell you too, as a leader, is to authentically share your struggles with your team as well, so that they understand they're not alone, um, that, that you are rumbling with this just as much, and, um, but that they're moving forward. You know, of course, don't um, get into a soapbox of just negativity. You wanna lead by example in terms of shedding positive light. But, um, but yeah, just having some of those uh, transparent conversations with them, I think, can help. And then the other thing to do is think about your team culture. You know, are there different things that you could do to support them during this time, even though they are remote? You know, um, I've been seeing some different groups having happy hours at the end of the week where they're enjoying some social time together. Um, I have some clients that are doing some exercise sessions where they're making those available online for their teams to do some team building in that way. Um, so I think if you can think of some fun ways that you can can do things with them, if you've got a budget, you know, for um, kind of team gifts or, or lunches that you would normally do, have some things sent out, you know, do some sort of delivery, you know, once a month or once each week, you're surprising someone new on the team with, um, a delivery gift of some kind, you know, a, a, I don't know, Harry David basket or edible arrangement, just something fun like that, that can also motivate them um, through some of that, that positivity as well. And I think a handwritten note goes a very long way with people, especially nowadays, um, you know, because right now it, it feels, I, I'm sure many people feel this way when you, op when you open the mailbox, a lot of what we're getting are bills and not so much of something of personal connection. So even just a, a handwritten note to your employees uh, could probably go a long way too, I, was, I would think. Yeah, All definitely. Right. Awesome. Uh, Carrie says, thanks, Megan. This was helpful to get past the anxiety of thinking about doing things differently. Yeah. So. Well, you know, I do. And, and every time I say it to a client, they go, oh, well, yeah. But taking yourself out of the equation, if you can just think about your customers 
it does. It helps to alleviate so much of that overwhelm and angst because it's not about you then. It's about serving someone else. So it's really about what are you focused on and what are, what's the meaning that you give it. You can literally do that anytime you feel overwhelmed, angry, um, helpless. If you're in a negative space, look at, okay, what am I focused on and what meaning am I giving it? If you shift either one of those, you can create a mindset shift really quickly. Very good. Uh, Marcel asks, <laughs> any simple ideas for service-based businesses, uh, such as a technology company, to hit more of the connection points? So in my opinion, the answer is, where is your avatar, your ideal client interacting? Where are they playing? So kind of knowing, you know, where your um, ideal customer is. You know, so if it is something that is of service, well, who is your avatar? What groups are they a part of? Can you join those groups? And then from a social media perspective, start to add value. Commenting, offering guidance, offering advice, starting to become the resource. And then um, that allowing you to then create some of those um, kind of almost referral-based relationships off of that for, for further conversation and, and the potential for relationships from there. Very good. All right. Well, I am not seeing any other questions at this point. Now, guys, keep in mind, uh, all attendees are welcome to ask questions of any of our panelists who are here. Um, so please feel free to ask those. But these have been great questions for you, Megan. I love it. Great presentation, sharing that information. Uh, keep in mind, everybody, that if you do want access to the exercise that Megan prov uh, provided during her presentation, uh, that she is going to, uh, she is welcome to or she's open to emailing that out to you um, as a Word document to share with you. Uh, and then if you do, of course, have employees, you can share that out, she said. Um, we are recording this, so this will be uh, shared through uh, the Level Up Coaching website, levelupcoachllc.com. Uh, we'll have this up later today, along with all of our uh, presenter, uh, our, all of our expert bios as well, along with their contact information. So it will be very very easy for all of you guys to reach our experts after today's uh, webinar. We will be doing this each and every Wednesday at noon uh, central time here through the end of May. So May 27th is our last day. Um, as I mentioned next week, uh, our, our expert will be Marcel Brown. In week three, Joanne May will be presenting. Week four, Carol Sparks will be presenting. Week five is Kurt Rickoff. And in week six, I will be presenting on sales. Um, let's see. Oh, good question. Carol asked if there's a way for attendees to send questions if they think of them throughout the week so that we can make sure the panel hits them in, in the coming weeks. Great question. So if you guys do have questions that you want uh, asked during uh, this program, I would go ahead and have you all send them to my email address. Uh, so I'm gonna put this out for everybody. My email address is jenny at levelupcoachllc.com. Uh, you can uh, email any of your questions. So if you realize that you have a question for Megan after today and you don't want to forget it, you can email me the question. And next week on our webinar, I will make sure to ask that question of Megan. If you think of questions for Marcel, Carol, Joanne, Kurt, or myself, I'll make sure to keep a copy of those to ask them. So that way, as we move forward, uh, we'll have all those questions and you guys are all welcome to come back. We can have up to 100 attendees on this webinar. Uh, so if you found this to be a value, you are welcome to share the link that you use to register. And I will also have the registration links set up on the website uh, by the end of today as well. So if you uh, think you know another business owner who might uh, find value in attending this in the future, we will, uh, we, you are open to share this until we have filled registration at 100 attendees. So I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, thanks everyone. Okay, yeah, uh, we have people just saying thank you. They're really appreciative of the information. And we can't wait to see you guys all next Wednesday at lunchtime. Join us here at noon. 
uh, and again, be ready to learn a little bit about the technology tools that you will need in order to move forward in this uh, very uncertain time. So thanks everybody. Thank you.